Welcome to Harvesting Clouds, where we take a practical approach to learning and leveraging clouds. In this video, we are going back to the basics and are looking at how IP addresses work. Before we start, let's quickly talk about why are we talking about understanding the IP addresses in today's video. Basically, what I believe is every complex thing is built up of multiple simple and smaller things. And IP addresses and networking in general is one such topic. Before we can delve into the complex concepts of network designs in Microsoft Azure or AWS, we need to understand how the underlying fabric is built on which all the complex architectures are built. And that thing is the IP addressing. So in this video, we are only looking at IPv4. How does a simple IPv4 address looks like? It's something like 10.2.1.5. This is a very simple, very basic IP address. What are these individual components in this? What, why are there four numbers in this? And why are they separated by this dot in between? So let's say that a general IP address looks like m.n.o.p. Each of this component is called an octet. Why is it called an octet? Because computer does not understand numeric language, just like you and me. It understands only binary. Each of this component internally is eight bits in binary. That's why it is called an octet. So if it is an eight bit number internally, that means that the lowest number that can be there is zero, 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 zero. That is eight zeros. And the max number in binary of eight bits can be one, 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 one. That means eight ones. If you use any online calculator right now, you will see that this simply comes out to be zero in numeric. And this number in numeric is 255. That means from zero to 255, there can be 256 numbers for each of these components for M, for N, for zero, for O and P. For each one of these, the lowest value is zero and the highest value could be 255. Theoretically, the smallest IP address that can exist is 0.0.0.0. .0 and the biggest IP address that can exist is 255.255.255. Another 255. These are theoretical IP addresses. They do not exist in actual world. They have specific and special meaning when working with actual virtual networks. But nevertheless, theoretically, these are this is the lowest IP address and this is the largest IP address possible. So what have we talked so far? First, it's all binary. When it comes to computer, we are only talking about binary. So the four components that we talked about in an IP address, in an IPv4 address specifically, these are called four octets. And then each of those octets can range from zero to 255, zero being the lowest value, 255 being the highest value. Now, to categorize all these IP addresses, somebody came up with a standard and they categorized these into multiple classes, A, B, C, D, and E. We do not work with D and E classes. E is only for research. D is for some video related stuff. When you, you will be working with virtual networks and other networking or virtual private clouds in AWS, you will be dealing with class A, class B or class C networks. So remember we talked about our format of m.n.o.p and we said that all of these are different octets the very first octet identifies which class that particular IP address is in. So if the first octet is between zero to 127, that means that IP address belongs to class A. If it is from 128 to 191, that belongs to class B. If the value is 192 to 223, it belongs to class C. The higher ranges, they belong to class D and class E, which we tend to ignore because they are of no help to us when talking about actual virtual networks. So let's take a look at quick examples. 
the earlier example that we took, which class does it belong to? As you can see from the first octet, its value is 10, which lies between 0 to 127. That means this is a class A IP address. Another IP address that you must have used commonly, 192.168.0.1, which is generally your router's IP address, where your router's configurations are. So which class does this IP address belongs to? So from the first octet, which is 192, you can see that this belongs to class C. Why are we interested in identifying the classes? This looks like a theoretical concept, except that it is not. From practical perspective, the thing that we are interested in is identifying the subnet mask for a particular class. So note that the value written here, this is not the exact value, this is the minimum subnet mask. What a subnet mask is, we'll talk about that shortly. But basically subnet mask ranges from the lowermost value 8 up to the total number of bits in an IP address. What is the total number of bits in an IP address? We talked earlier that each of the octet has 8 bits. So in total 8 times 4, there can be 32 bits. That means class A can have subnet mask of minimum value of 8 and max value of 32. It can be 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, up to 32. Similarly for class B, it can range from minimum value of 16 up to 32. Class C has minimum value of 24 up to 32. That's why we are talking here only about the minimum value. Now what is a subnet mask? Why are we interested in that? Let's take a look at this particular diagram. Here what we have is class A with the minimum subnet mask that is 8. So if the IP address looks something like 10.0.0.0 and it has subnet mask of 8, what does that mean? That means that the first 8 bits, first 8 bits is your first octet, that will be used to identify the network and the remaining of the bits, that is 8 plus 8 plus 8, 8 times 3 is 24, the remaining of the 24 bits will be used to identify hosts. What does this mean? This means that the first 8 bits donating the network, that many networks can exist in your environment if you are using class A. So how many networks can exist? Theoretically, 256 networks can exist. That is the maximum number that you can write in binary using 8 bits, as we saw earlier. How many hosts can be there? There can be a large number of hosts. Whatever the maximum number that you can write with 24 bits in binary, all once 24 times, that many number of hosts you can have. Whereas for class C, if you see an IP address, something like 192.168.0.1, you can assume that the first three octets at least are being used to identify the network. That means there can be multiple networks in your environment. Whereas in each of those networks, you can only have the host that can be up to the last eight bits. That means here, the number of hosts can be at max of 256 in each of those networks. So to repeat, larger mask, like in class C, means more networks, but less number of hosts. Whereas smaller mask, like in class A for, with 8 bits, means less number of networks, but more hosts. Now quick pop quiz. Can I have a IP address like this one with subnet mask of 16? Yes, of course I can have. Now this is class A, as it is evident from the first octet of this particular IP address. Now, as we saw in the previous slide, class A can have minimum of 8 bits for the subnet mask, but it can also have up to 32 bits of subnet mask. And in this example, the subnet mask is 16. That means the first two octets will be used to identify a network. What this will also mean is if I have something like 10.1, another like 10.2, this means they will be different network. 0 
this will say 0 dot let's say 6 this means that the first one is a different network entirely the second one is different network entirely if it has subnet mask as 16 because the first two octets are being used to identify the network now that we have seen the concept of how you differentiate between which network it belongs to which octet it belongs to let's take quickly look at what CIDR notation is and we have already seen this notation in action in the earlier slide it's called classless interdomain routing you do not need to memorize this at all you just need to know what CIDR notation is you do not need to know what its full form is and what CIDR notation is it consists of an IP address a slash character and an integer to identify the subnet mask so for example if I say my address space is 10.0.0.0 slash 16 this is your CIDR notation in CIDR notation this becomes your very first IP address in the whole network slash 16 means that the subnet mask is 16 so here if I split it and write it in this format it becomes 10.0.0.0 which becomes my first IP address slash character and 16 so if I write an IP address 10.1.2.2 this means that this belongs to first network 10.1.20.2 251 this is also the first network because the network is only identified by the first two octets whereas if I write something like 11.2.x.x this means that this is a different network entirely similarly if I write something like 10.6.y.y this is also a different network entirely to identify a network we are only looking at the first two octets and to identify the host we are looking at the last two octets now we have seen the concept of how an IP address works what are the different components within an IP address how the network subnet mask works and how it differentiates between the network component of an IP address and the host component of an IP address and how CIDR notation is an easier rep representation of all these concepts now to bring it all together let's talk about a simple example let's say we have multiple offices across the globe let's say we have one office in US another one in Australia another one in India and last one in UK let's say when designing these networks we leveraged class A something like 10.0.0.0 and then we leveraged 16 as the subnet mask which means that the first two octets will be used to identify the network component which network that particular IP address belongs to and the last two components they are being used to identify the host component which host is there inside that particular network let's also assume that for US the network looks like 10.1.x.x for Australia it looks like 10.2.x.x where x could be anything from 0 to 255 for India it looks like 10.3.x.x and for UK it looks like 10.4.x.x as you said x can be from 0 to 255 now let's say this VM6 it says I want to connect to 10.1.0.8 so this particular IP address when the request will go to the router it will quickly look at the first two octets based on the subnet mask of this particular IP address it will attach the subnet mask with that request that the subnet mask is slash 16 so the router will look at the first two octets to identify which network it belongs to as we can see 10.1 it belongs to US location so this particular communication will go to US location now within US location it will then look at the remaining of the two octets to identify which VM it belongs to and then let's say this it belongs to VM8 
So the communication from VM6 will get established with VM8 through this particular mechanism. If the IP address would have been something like 10.3.10.11, for example, and VM6, the same VM is trying to communicate to this particular IP address, it will look at the first two octets, will identify this particular IP address belongs to network. It only looks at the first two IP address because the subnet mask says so. Looking at the first two octets, it knows that this particular network exists within India location. It sends the traffic in here. And then it looks at the last two octets to identify which particular VM within that particular network that IP address belongs to. Let's say it belongs to this particular VM. It then sends the traffic to that particular VM and the connection is established between this source VM and the target VM in two different networks. That sums up this particular example. We have looked at how network IP addressing can be very powerful. A simple CIDR notation like in here can be used to identify so many things. It can be used to identify different networks, how many networks can be there, how many hosts can be there. And then we can leverage this particular simple concept to build various complex network designs. In the subsequent videos, we will be looking at different designs and how we can leverage this knowledge that we learned in this video to build all those complex designs. We'll not be doing this by hand. We will be leveraging different calculators from online to build all these designs, to perform all these calculations and make the hard work easy for us. I hope this was helpful to you in setting the right foundation. It may look like simple stuff, but is very powerful as you will see in the upcoming videos. If you like the content, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified of the new content as it is released on the channel. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.